All right, bloody hell, this is why I never put anything up for a vote, or rather should never do so again. I put up a vote basically saying, hey, what do people want me to do now? And of course they vote for the most painful thing possible. So I'm going to try and make this quick. The vote was that I should play the servants after my humanity first and my academy game. Basically, the servants look at the arriving race of um, basically interstellar slavers and are like, awesome, we should worship those people. Um, and apparently that's what we're playing today. I think I can do this in an episode, maybe two. We're going to turn the game difficulty up to Brutal, but that's utterly meaningless because all Brutal does is make the remove some of the restrictions on how the aliens played the game and make it easier to accumulate hate, which is something that can't happen when you're playing the Bloody Servants. So let's start the game and go from there. So the objective is the Servants. We've seen it when we play before. And yes, I have had a beverage or two because this is going to be painful. Um, their objective is to have the alien administration take over a majority of the Earth's territory and then to raise the flag of the alien nation at the United Nations in New York. Now, of course, if you wanted to challenge yourself, you could do this while, you know, causing as little damage to humanity as possible. But this is painful as enough as it is, so anyway, we'll talk through a speed run strategy in a moment. The day we learned, we were not alone. As a familiar sun rose on an unfamiliar universe, some of us saw wondrous possibility, and others, existential danger. The astronomers had insisted that the bright streak in the sky was no natural phenomenon. Most of us didn't really believe them, until it burned through our atmosphere. And crashed in a couple of you making me do this. Leaving only wreckage and uncertainty. In our ignorance, we fractured, taking refuge in our most primal emotions. Each of us saw what we wanted to see. Yep. Rapture. Fear. Revelation. Lies. And at the nexus, salvation. We entreat our earthly forms to its cleansing flame, praying that we will be found worthy. For only by accepting we are servants may we ascend, and only by excising the doubt within and around us may we be brought into its holy embrace. I'm really confident that not a word she just said made any sense. Okay. The council's appointed me the acting representative. You're Judith Howell. We know about you. Uh, you're the one with the quote about the cat being alive and dead and also talking about your past history with psychotropic substances. Yes, most of the things I... It says, uh, you've been told many things about the servants. I expect most of them are bad. You no doubt have many questions, but I'm afraid I cannot explain myself fully. Not yet. Uh, yes, um, I know all about what the alien's about. Let's have a look at our starting counsellors. We've got a affluent, eminent, inscrutable. So eminent, affluent, but persuasion eight evangelist, very appropriate for these guys. And we have a five, four, six, two, five diplomat, government connected. You are solidly met, but this is the good thing about playing the servants. I'm not really convinced you can lose the game. So our starting counselors don't really matter because difficulty is a lie. Um, the serve we're playing the servants, so we're going to win. Um, our starting organizations aren't great, but again, how are we going to lose the game? Our starting objective is to go investigate this location because at this point, apparently, the organization to worship the aliens exists, even though we know nothing about them. The strategy is going to be really simple. We want the United States because the only thing we really need in order to make this a speed run is as much research as possible. So we'll grow, grab the US, and then because we want to win, we're also eventually going to want to grab Russia. And if you haven't seen where this is going, well, yeah, like I said, this run's going to be a little bit painful. But uh, we are playing faithless traitors to humanity, so we're going to need the power of the United States and the Russian nuclear arsenal on our side, just in case someone else decides to try and stop us. Let's just see if we can grab another counselor straight out. Again, what we want is people... Oh, extremists, that's appropriate. Prior, Krauser, da, 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 journalist, aware, eminent government, extreme... A lot of extremists available to us, which is, again, very appropriate. A little bit of income here. Celebrity... Oh, we don't want a pacifist. But that's plus one persuasion. 
The minus one loyalty uh, per atrocity is not great, so we'll have to fire them later on, but that's a net eight persuasion character, possibly helping us breaking into the United States. Extremist, wealthy counselor, plus one persuasion where cohesion's at least six, that's not gonna help us in the United States. This executive, national hero, prosperous, puppet master, careless, plus three persuasion in the UK. If you were a US character, you'd be more useful. Striver is fantastic. We might grab this diplomat Striver just because Striver is incredible. Even if diplomats are pretty... Diplomat's not a very good class, but you know... We'll grab them because they're a striver, and also I feel like grabbing some extremist criminals and stuff like that would be great. We'll fire um, the this diplomat at the appropriate juncture, but for the moment it doesn't really matter. Let's get started. I'm going to go with a Mexico-Canada opening, as you often do with the United States, and then go for the USA itself. So what I really want is CP cap, people with persuasion and administration, and no sense of morals, because again, we're playing the servants picked up one of the eight persuasion counselors to open, so we're going to be rolling some 68% on Mexico, solid start. We may flunk, we may get points, but I reckon we'll eventually, one way or the other, be able to break into the US. Let's go. And no, even though we want to worship the aliens, I will not investigate them because um, it's inefficient and I want to make this as quick as possible. Management team, I feel like operators and investors, because we are going to be assassinating people, purging people, launching coup d'etats, everything we can do to undermine humanity. We will, of course, tell humanity that we are a bunch of traitors because that can only end well. That'll give us a whole bunch of influence and let us immediately jump back into the... Oh, we got a critical failure, who cares? Um, no one's hired the Striver. People have hired basically everyone else, but we will hire this gentleman from who is a Striver because he levels up. 30% faster, which is ridiculous. Um, once we have more influence, we'll probably fire the... Yeah, let's all let's all live together in harmony and worship the Hydra, Hail Hydra, and all that. I'm going to be saying Hail Hydra a lot in this playthrough, because, again, I can't really believe the fact that I'm doing it. At this point, we'll let's go we'll investigate find. the aliens. How many points do we get in Mexico? We have two points in Mexico. Let's close out a third, because then Mexico is safe. Ready to go. What are our odds in Canada? Uh, we can spend four influence per person. Grab that. And what's our roll here? 16%. 16% is not good. I'll spend four, make it 35%. We've got a starting 37. It's not a very high income, but it is something. Let's roll in. And then in terms of Mexico's priorities, I don't know. It, it doesn't really matter, to be honest, um, because we're not going to keep Mexico. So what we're going to do is just make Mexico have a space flight program. That's always good. We can absorb it later on. There we go. I don't expect it to, you know, pay off particularly much, but we'll do what we have to do. Oh, look, we're sad that we didn't find any aliens. Have you wondered why the spacecraft crashed? Oh, I'm sure the scientists and engineers pouring over the wreck will come up with some mechanical explanation. But don't you think it's strange that another species, so much more advanced than us, so much more experienced, should suffer such an inexplicable accident? We learn the secret of flight only in the 20th century, yet our passenger aircraft are as close to perfectly safe as any method of transport can be. The emissaries are far more skilled in space than we are in the air, so what might have brought down one of their, uh, their ships? So apparently we're going to have to find them. Uh, so we're going to have to research the signs. Basically, at this point, we need to you know, we find the aliens control. so that we can talk to them and say, hey, we think you guys are great. All right, we didn't we didn't get the Mexico executive. That's okay. So now we're going to point all of our fancy counselors at Canada. Taking control. And Plus any someone who is less skilled Ready for orders. can start public campaigning in the United States. Start shaping that up. And let's go for a triple attempt on Canada. Russia's already got some people moving into it, but you know what? We can take it later. Uh, 
I won't grab Kazakhstan again. Let's focus on grabbing it later. I will eventually replace that diplomat with someone who can like do coups because that's probably the next step in terms of recruiting. Plus we should get a fifth counselor pretty quickly. I'm surprised so many talented people want to join the whack jobs, but you know what, here we are. You see now, even as the servant server, I can mock the protectorate because well, they're just, they're just us, but arguably even worse, because they don't get the same support from the aliens we do, among other things. Oh, critical success, Americans. We are winning you over. 36% public support in the United States. Bring it on. Ah, uh, we didn't get Mexico, and we're probably going to miss Canada too. <laughs> we rolled the 16, but we missed the 64. Whatever. All right, Canada is fully under control. And I've also, I've just remembered I am the bad guys. And because I'm the bad guys, I can turn on spoils, which, you know, whatever. Uh, which means I can start buying organizations for my people. I need a criminal at some point, but again, I not quite ready to fire my terrible starting person. Uh, let's grab someone who has a little bit of admin and doesn't need anything else. Yeah, you can get a little bit of extra science and whatever. Whatever. Alright, we got Canada. Acknowledged. Let's run some more public How campaigns in the United the States. I'm Actually, you. we can spend a little money to make sure they do Your well orders. because, you know, we're stealing all the money in Mexico Making to our... greet the, what are we calling them? The emissaries. Yeah. That sounds about up. right. Ime. Uh, yeah. Where to? Where to? All I really need to I do is close out Mexico, course. and then my initial objectives are in. pretty much we'll done. Bring this nation to our and it's time to put pressure on Reporting the United in. States. Bringing them on board. And yes, I am rolling two dice there. Uh, let's bring in... Do I want economy? Yeah, calling the generals. I would normally never do that, but you know, it is what it is. The people will come to our side. Forty-six percent support in the U.S. Gotta love it. Alien fleet detected, and for once, it's a good sign. We fail to take control. All We're right, we got Mexico. Maximum spoils. Give me some money. So we now have the maximum pressure possible on the United States. So this should be greatly increasing our odds, which means we can now roll the dice at 38% twice, or we can do some public campaigning. At your service. Who is available to recruit? Because I might recruit someone to replace that person. Oh, look at him. Stern-faced. He's corrupt. Perfect. Minus four. Love it. High espionage commands can stage coups, assassinations. What's not to love? Over, yeah, lots of, okay, lots of these sort of people. So we'll save up a little bit of influence once we've got the US and go from there. Um, I will just roll some very low percentage chances here. Ready for orders. Do another round of public campaign and then throw the actually talented people at it. Be back in a sec. All right, bingo, the first spot in the US is secured. The first one is always the most difficult, but we now have control of the financial sector because apparently uh, worshipping the aliens is good for business. Don't ask me how, I just know that that is the case. Um, my priorities for the US don't particularly matter that much. I might build some mission control. We'll level up the military. Those are probably the two things that need to happen. Stabilizing the country to defend it, though, is probably a good idea. So bring down... Uh, inequality may actually be in our interests, but we'll see how we go. We're also rolling some low, low we quality dice here, but those... Alright, I'll take it. Wonderful, more aliens crashing on Earth, and we have two points in the US at 22 November 22. Strong opening. You really can crack into the US pretty early. Like, if you have the right starting counselors and you do a solid opening, it doesn't Let's seem to be that hard. So let's just roll basically everyone at it. Standing by. What's the op? Actually, no. Putting you can investigate, in and we'll be back once I have full control of the U.S. of A. All right, bingo. Clock at 30 December 2022. Before we get the trigger uh, to move over to slower turn cycles, we now have full control of the U.S., which means Canada can just focus on building mission control to its heart's content. 
America is where it's at. So we are now action stable. We've got some boost income. We've got some science income. Researching clandestine cells, which means we're going to be able to get another counselor. It'll also up our CP cap, which will help our influence income. And this is all really solid gameplay, no matter which faction that you're playing, except for the fact it doesn't matter because you guys are making me play the servants. And here we have Judith Howe basically saying that all her, well, many of her followers think she's infallible. She isn't, but she lets them believe it, uh, because apparently that's equal, uh, rather useful. To be honest, I do not know what the aliens are doing, but I do know why they are doing it. The aliens did not come here because they hate us, as the more xenophobic believe, nor did they come in friendship, as the more naive do. They did not come for profit or power out of necessity. They came here because they are lost. They do not understand this as yet, and neither do the people of Earth, but they will. It is our task to help them see. Okay, um, management research, outpost Habs, let's go. Alright, yeah, so people who might not know why these servants is easy mode, for one thing, you're on the same side as the aliens. So, you know, the people who are meant to be the challenge for just about every other faction, you're, you're on their side. So that's kind of easy. The second thing is you just randomly get handed control points, because remember in an ordinary game where you have to spend all that research making sure that you've got defences against enthrallment and aliens stealing your control points? Ah, ah, when you're playing the servants, the aliens just randomly give control points to you. Now, I don't particularly want this one in Columbia, so instead I will just set it to build Columbia a space program abandon the nation and just sort of leave that there. I've taken over Israel. Israel gives a little bit of extra, a tiny little bit of extra boost, uh, nuclear weapon, all sorts of good stuff, relatively cheap. I don't have a counselor that can take me into Kazakhstan or Russia yet. I need to fire my uh, old school useless diplomat and replace them with someone with a little bit more teeth, but I'm just saving up 60 influence and watching the pool until that can happen. Science is up to 695 a month, not bad. Uh, I had a random event that took some boost away, but I'm still going to be able to stockpile in time to go to the moon when that comes around, I expect. The other factions are expanding. We've got a very, very confused Europe so far. Uh, India looks like it's going to be academy territory, probably. And China, there's one initiative point. It's a very early initiative point in China. But again, it kind of doesn't matter because I'm playing the servants. And it may be brutal, except it's, it's not. Anyway, let's keep going. All right, I'm not sure why this is so funny, but we recruited a person called Cash Bland. They are an 18-year-old spy who's now signed up with an alien-worshipping cult to overthrow nations. They have coup d'etat, although they're not particularly good with it, but they also have purge and crackdown. We can make something of this character. We just need to level the command up a little bit, and we will be good to go, people. A little bit of espionage, too, might help, but, you know, life is good. 18 years old and ready to overthrow the Russian government in... Uh, probably a year or two, I reckon, at this rate, once we can get our CP cap up. In any case, welcome to the team, Cash Bland. And look, Cash is saying, hello, Superior, thank you for bringing me on board. No one mentioning the fact that we just brought a freaking 18-year-old kid into our, like, international alien-worshipping Illuminati that has taken over the United States and converted 67% of the population to our cause, and which is solving inequality and political division in the US for the sole purpose of handing it over to the aliens. Oh, what is this run? All right, so the aliens, I mean the emissaries, are abducting people in Kazakhstan, so of course our entire council is heading there, not because we want to catch them, apprehend them, or stop them, but because we want their bloody autographs. Um, I've also decided it'd be a bad idea for Humanity First to have all this glorious boost in Kazakhstan, so Baikonur will be mine, plus it'll give a little bit of pressure on Russia when it comes time to take those control points there. Ah, uh, yes, more... Uh, emissaries crashing on planet Earth. Fantastic. More the merrier. You're all very welcome. Now hurry up and build some assault carriers. 1% public opinion. You people are all bad at your jobs. Alright, we're slowly building up public opinion. We're going to need more than that if we're going to launch a coup in Kazakhstan, especially since humanity first are bringing unrest down. Nuclear fission in space is complete. Please do... Ah, uh, they didn't do mission to the moon. I was hoping they'd do mission to the moon. There we are. Investigate the first contact's objectives.
Perhaps things could have unfolded differently were we the one first ones to make first contact. Still, we must adapt. The aliens clearly have their reasons for doing what they do. For now, we must have faith. For what reasons you must have faith in the aliens, I don't know. The aliens are not so different from us. You, you've never met them. You know nothing about them. You are making shit up. Yes, they are far greater than we are, at least in some respects, but to view them as fundamentally other is a mistake. Had our positions been reversed, a matter of perhaps only a few thousand years, then we would be the ones looking down on their planet now as they look down upon ours. The true question is, were that the case? Would we be acting as they were? Would we be approaching them with open hands in peace? Or would we be far brutal than they could ever be? To this question, I have no answers, but I suspect it would be the latter. And because you don't know, you're going to assume that we should surrender humanity regardless, because they that makes sense. Alright, our campaign to get an alien autograph has improved and advanced. We now have alien methods researched. Uh, disappearances. Unfortunately, it seems clear those humans who disappeared did not do so by choice. Aliens are seeking control rather than understanding. Discouraging, but not unexpected. We knew the aliens were searching for something. It's clear now they do not understand what they are searching for. Or, or it is, and they're kidnapping people and influencing them in order to take over our society. They are for now treating humanity as hostile, and it is easy to understand why. To them, there is no visible difference between a human who understands them and one who hates them. The temptation must be great to simply use their natural superiority to exercise direct... What is this game? Uh, still, we knew from the very beginning our task would not be easy. The choice of emissaries to act as they have means that Many will die, including perhaps us. But death in a worthy, worthy cause is not to be feared. The plants may die so long as the garden survives. So now our new objective is to speak with the Chosen. So we have to find an alien and we have to talk to it. Set our goal. It's hard to explain what I saw. I did not hear the aliens, but I understood them. I did not recognize them, but I knew them as one who knows... Da -da -da -da. They are fleeing as well. They are masters, yet they are also slaves. Fear is what drives them. Fear of what befell them in the past. Fear of what might happen again. They can be more, so much more, but they must... Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm asking questions here, because she's giving this rambling speech about what she knows about the aliens, which seems like it's just random and shit she made up. But at the same time, from what we know about the story from the other playthroughs... All of this is true. Fear is what drives the Hydra. Fear of the attack on them in the past. Fear that they might be subject to biological attack again. So, this rambling rant is in fact based in reality. I don't know how, or whether it's just, you know, a monkey's on a typewriter situation, but Hal is in fact, and I hate to say it, onto something. Literally, like every mission phase, I am getting a free control point somewhere that I cannot afford. So I'm just setting it to space flight program and then abandoning it in the hopes that this will eventually mean whatever country I come back to might have some mission control that's useful later. Uh, but yeah, that's a thing. Uh, we're improving our public opinion in Kazakhstan and increasing the unrest, so we should be able to take over the state soon. And then, once we get a little more CP cap, it's into Russia with us. And once you have Russia and the United States, well, I expect we basically won. But that doesn't mean we're not going to expand in space and try and do this as quickly and cleanly is the wrong word as possible. All right, well, the aliens really want me to have Poland. You can see this crackdown point here. That still has my original spaceflight program set from before. So we're going to abandon the second one um, and see how we go. Kazakhstan is getting to a critical tipping point. I should be ready to move in relatively soon. For the moment, tech is space mining and refining. The Academy is doing mission to the moon, and we're trying to capture this research slot over here which is the completely useless terrestrial military science, so that we can direct it towards something useful. I'm also doing arrival markets to start getting orgs, and then it's all about the path to paradise. More aliens, I mean emissaries, continue to land, which means greater and greater chances that I will find one and be able to talk to it, or yeah. at least find it. Uh, we can't exactly talk to them yet, but you know, that's not really a problem, and I'm not sure the servants have thought of that at this point. We've gotten Kazakhstan's unrest way up. We're building up public support, so soon it will be time to pop the 
uh, coup d'etat and get ourselves that boost income. After all, we don't want humanity first using it. That's the worst case scenario. Everyone else, we can probably uh, we can probably be peaceful with everyone that isn't the resistance and humanity first. But them, they no, no, no boost for them. Only for the servants. Alright, Kazakhstan is now under control, and because we're the terrible servants, I'm just going to spoil the country. The reason I'm going to do this is because we still have a lot of unrest, which means we're vulnerable to coups. We're over our CP cap, which means we're vulnerable to coups. So this is just going to keep the executives nice and happy while we fix the country. I might actually go 50% spoils, because that'll still keep them happy. And then what do we want to do in order to increase uh, the rest value of this? I think pushing cohesion up might be good, so we might go one point of unity, one point of welfare, something like that, try and stabilize the country, and once it's stable, we'll switch back to building a full complement of mission control in Kazakhstan, because that's what it's good for. Eventually, we might want to throw the academy out of Russia, but for the moment, the for some reason, the uh, academy, who have you know serious moral quandaries about whether or not they should fight against the aliens that are invading our planet, uh, seem perfectly happy sending military units uh, into Ukraine. But, you know, mine is not to reason why. Mine is just to find an emissary to talk to. Mission to the Moon is finished, and of course we will launch a probe to the Moon right away. Is it because it is vital for us to develop humanity in space and build a great war fleet to resist the invader? No. It's to make sure no one else does that, and also because developing a space economy will let us build lots of labs which will teach us how to build, be, you know, better friends with the alien species that have come to uplift us. So if we find any good locations that are that might allow an a, uh, another human faction to build up a solid economy and have a fighting chance, we're going to settle it. We're going to occupy it, we're going to squat on it, uh, and we're going to do the same thing with Mars. And then actually I find that my thinking is that as the servants, we might have a lot more reason to build early game warships than other factions do. Because we don't want to fight the aliens. We just want to destroy every space asset the other human factions put up, and maybe build some bombardment ships too. But I'm getting ahead of myself. For now, the moon. Apparently, the academy will play nice for us if we give them two boost. And it's a generous trade. I, um... This will not come back to bite them in any way, shape, or form at all. Now, the moon in this playthrough doesn't seem to have any one-stop shop for all the resources someone could need. Uh, there is this amazing site here. There's, so there's a site that's good for metals and nobles and a little bit of volatiles. There's a site that's really good. Like That's an incredible fissile site. A little bit of metal, a little bit of volatile. Neither of them have water, and water is very heavy. So what we probably want to do is found an outpost, although these are still going to be expensive until I get interplanetary rocketry and all that sort of stuff done. But I will reserve, at the very least, what do I want? Probably the one source, the one good source of water on the moon. If I do that, and then Mare Tranquillitatis, I think I'm good. This is a fantastic volatile site, we can take it later. These two sites combined. Um, I might wait for... Oh no, I won't wait for it. It's lazy of me not to have interplanetary rocketry, but I'll also grab Mare Tranquillitatis. Reserve that, I take those two sites, and I've basically really restricted the ability of the other um, factions to get to Mars. On reflection, this is a lot of metal and stuff for the moon, but there's only one other place for a faction to get water. And if so, that guarantees a high tonnage requirement if they want to go mine Mars. We're going to be in a much better position. This is actually going to be the first location we slap a mine on, because most of the costs for building are going to be the base materials and the um, the base metals and the water. The volatiles will get a tiny amount, but really, if you wanted volatiles, you'd need to go here. I'm not sure I want to commit to a third moon base without interplanetary rocketry. I know that this is completely unnecessary in terms of optimization, uh, and I am being a little lazier than normal in terms of my build order because I'm playing the servants, but you can see what I'm getting at. The idea is to lock people out of the good locations while building up our own space economy, you know, to impress the emissaries. 
So Deep System Skywatch is complete, which means that the emissaries bases in the outer solar system have been discovered. But we don't have to go there. I mean, technically speaking, we don't even have to leave Earth because you see, um, in this game about developing and industrializing space and then fighting dramatic space battles, the servants offer the superior experience of never having to leave Earth. So that's awesome. Luckily for us, however, uh, usefully, I think, because we do still want to industrialize space for our benefit. Uh, Exodus won that technology slot and decided to put industrialization of space in there, which is an oddly intelligent choice for the AI. Very, very useful technology. After terrestrial military science, which is useless, finishes, we will have seized this spot, and we can switch this over to advanced chemical rocketry. That plus solid core fission, which means we should have both of the boost reduction technologies by the time we're really ready to build mines on the moon, and that, it, or at least we'll have one of them, and that's pretty perfect as far as I'm concerned, because we're going to need two mines to really get going. Okay, so apparently the servants call human beings who have been abducted and brainwashed by the aliens the Chosen. We have at last been able to meet with some humans chosen by the emissaries, i.e. abducted and hit by ferrocytes. Contacting them has been difficult. Many unfriendly eyes are upon them, and some have disappeared once again, perhaps for good. We have learned to be extremely cautious upon a first meeting, and only later, in a more secure lo uh, location, speak of more sensitive subjects. The Chosen are, of course, careful not to give away their emissary secrets. They listen, but do not speak. Earning their trust and convincing them to place us in contact with the emissaries will be a long and slow process, but hard as it is, it will be a mere dress rehearsal for the task that lies ahead. Learn the alien ways. Control is the key, she says. The aliens believe that only through control can they find safety. How could they not? Whatever has damaged them so, it has left them drifting, purposeless, and in their confusion, they lash out. To them, it must seem that exercising dominance is their one refuge in a frightening and dangerous world. But control can be an illusion. Once something obeys our direction, we come to use it, to depend on it, until eventually all our choices are shaped by what we persist in believing serves us. Tools are the subtlest traps of all, for they pull our attention outwards and away from ourselves. It is our own desire, uh, uh, one who holds godlike power in his hands, yet he's unable to resist his basic impulses, is less free than Louis. Okay, so, okay. There's a lot of philosophical mumbo jumbo in what she's going on about. The basics is, we need to research alien operations when it becomes available. Uh, we need to find the aliens, and then I presume we need to talk to them. But at the moment, we are just talking to the people that they have abducted, who we are actually, you know, we're, we're kind of super jealous of those people. Um, I now have a lot of money that I have saved up. That was very deliberate. So let's go find my spy, Cash Bland. Cash Bland is now going to run some of these massive corporations to give him lots of administration points, blowing most of our money because eventually uh, Cash is going to become a criminal and he's going to need these admin points. He'll bring in the criminal logs and then he'll trade them off to someone else. Uh, for the meantime, he can probably hold on to, yeah, we'll take some monthly income and life is good. Also, we're at 201 cap now, so 205, we barely feel it. Kazakhstan is becoming I suppose, a more orderly place. And as for the United States, people are turning against us in terms of public opinion. So let's just go 17% unity and make sure Americans understand that worshipping alien life forms is where it's at. I'm pretty sure that's a political perspective that, um, yeah, I'm not sure how we're, we're getting that into the American political spectrum, but you know what? We're the servants. And here's more weirdness that comes from playing the servants. We've got the Town that Stood Still event where there is a mass disappearance in a nation. Now, we don't have the resources to do anything about it, but this is actually great. More abductions make the aliens stronger, and the event increases the opinion of the aliens in the USA, increasing our public opinion back to 62% and rising. So what is meant to be a terrible event for literally every Final other faction is actually fantastic for us. Servants. And so we complete our mission objective, the Path to Paradise. This increases our management capacity by 25. It gives us the shield of the devoted. Uh, da, 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 da. 
much charged discussion amongst the faithful, we have achieved consensus, one which incorporates the views of both those who wish to serve the Hydra without question and those who see them but as a stepping stone for all humanity. The problem is control. Okay, so this theme, she always opens with the problem is control. The emissaries do not trust us. This is regrettable but understandable. We are a violent species. True. The aliens are too, of course, in their own <laughs> in their own way in the sense that they are invading us, but Okay, Judith, carry on. But anyone viewing the history of our planet would be inclined to evaluate us first and foremost as a threat. And what does one do with a threat? One controls it. Simply speaking to the aliens, urging them to trust us is of course not enough. The aliens wouldn't believe us, and why should they? We must show them that we are worthy. The price may be high. Humans will die in the emissary service, perhaps in their thousands or millions. Yet it is the gardens. Yet it is the garden that matters, not the flower. Each death, each sacrifice is an act of proof. The emissaries have the potential to be something more, something greater than either of us could ever be alone. But hurt and lost as they are, they can only accept guidance from those they trust. It is our mission to earn that trust, whatever it takes. Okay, let's research vision piles. Also, America, I, I, the evangelicals are supporting the initiative. Okay, uh, so evangelical vote is swinging towards the initiative, but with our unity investment, we should be able to control the American public opinion Recon pretty copies. well. We now Recon have a CP advantage, which is great, which means we can start thinking about our next objective. And that objective is obvious. We need Russia. Uh, we absolutely need Russia. If we're going to convince the aliens that we can help them and make sure that they can establish their new reign of benevolence on Earth, we need Russia under our control. So I have equipped to that end Cash here with the Shield of the Devoted, which we just got by finishing our mission, which makes him kind of amazing. He's just gained 5 Command, 6 Administration, a massive 10 Security, 3 Persuasion, uh, it's it's pretty damn good. Plus we get Unity and Xenology Research. Xenology Research is a pretty useless bonus, it's pretty easy to get, but he now has all of this additional administration cap to use, which we can use to increase his investigation and espionage further, or his command, and he has Crackdown, Purge, and Coup d'etat. So he, our now 20-year-old uh, Superboy, not Superboy, he's 20 now, uh, is going to get us into Russia. Note, I only call him a boy because in the context of running an international Illuminati, that seems young. Obviously, people at 18 have reached their age of majority in most countries. Um, Eris Resources seems like a good pick, even if it is expensive. 11% space mining. Like, I'll see if someone else can equip it. I think the answer is probably going to be no. I mean, what I could do... In fact, what I will do is unequip this, equip this, go back to cash, give cash this, and cash is now at 14 espionage, which is pretty respectable as an early gain stat point. Uh, we can take him up, what, one, another one point? There's another point up here, or there's a point down here for one. Yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be a pretty pretty powerful operator. I don't think I need steel project or public campaign. He's got all those already. Just because it's two stars doesn't mean it's better. Um, he's got assassinate already. So we'll equip Scipio systems and be done with it. Fifteen espionage should be enough to do what we need to do. If not, we'll fall back on unrest and coups. In the name of showing the emissaries that we are their worthy servants. Oh God. Ah, this game is lots of fun. I love this game, but this, this playthrough is an interesting challenge. And we finished Alien Ways. Learn the Alien Ways objective. It's now clear the emissaries have chosen the path of direct control, exercising power over the chosen directly. Nations are falling before them as those in positions of influence fall one by one under their sway. Then there's some talk about how people are reacting against this for some reason. We still have little understanding of how the emissaries control the chosen. The great danger is that their form of control is so overwhelming, so far superior to our capabilities, that it will leave the servants as nothing but mindless drones. Still, I do not believe this to be the case. The chosen that we've encountered are still recognizably human. Different, yes, but not entirely transformed. If the power they exercise is a matter of loyalty, of devotion, 
then we may yet succeed. All right, so we now to reach, need to research alien movements. We are drawing close to the point at which we must stand before the aliens with only our faith to guide us. I admit it, it frightens me. Will I be proven worthy? Or will they just immediately mind enslave you or shoot you? To stand alone in the dark place, to know that no one will ever learn of what your fate might have been is a hard thing to face. The temptation is great to delay, to make excuses, to search for some technological golden calf that promises safety. Is that a joke about the other factions searching for solutions to Ferrisite? Because th those things exist. Other factions do find them. Yet that is the same trap other factions have fallen Okay, that's the same trap other factions have fallen into. They believe that their weapons and their research can protect them, but the only true path is to face our fears and to surrender to them. Although, just just as a matter of a matter of record, as we know, uh, weapons and research can in fact protect you. So apparently, our faction leader's plan is to now that we've discovered the aliens have mind control powers, to go talk to them, and hope that the mind control doesn't ruin everything. Awesome. Okay, so we'll research alien movements when that becomes available. When you really need a government overthrown, send in cash. Bland. Okay, so that's two slots. We need to grab executive next turn. I am over CP cap, but that's because I've been getting random spots all over the place that for some reason are not building mission control like I told them to. So we'll abandon this random spot in the Alpine States. We'll abandon this random spot in Argentina. Uh, we'll abandon this random slot in Ukraine, and all of a sudden we're back under CP cap. We'll be a little bit over once we take the executive, but that's okay. So we're getting closer and closer to mission almost accomplished. We're also doing nuclear freighters, which will make the first mine on the moon much more affordable. Should reduce it down to about the 40 mark. We would be mining around now normally. We've been a little bit delayed, but that's okay. We're at 5.1 boost income. We'll get a little bit more once we take the Russian executive. And life, um, well, life is pretty good. Just quick check for experience upgrades. There we go administration and I reckon we can get either more see normally I would do welfare but we're not planning for a long game so I'm just gonna go with money income uh, and go from there building up a nice little bank it'll come in handy I'll continue with nuclear freighters the price of the first mining complex on the moon drops to 24.7 boost which is pretty manageable uh, we will still need uh, another, what's this cost? Five to run. We'll need another couple of boost, three to get the solar collector for this one, and then we'll need to repeat the process for the other one, although we will have some resources coming in which should help, and then we can start banking for Mars. We can see the other humans have made it uh, to the moon, but no one's grabbed the other water slot. They have grabbed our volatile slot, however, one of them. So either we can go to Korolev Crater to have some volatile income, or we can block everyone else from water, by going for Peary Crater, at least until the asteroids open up, and right now no one's going for the asteroids, and I don't intend to give them the idea. Okay, things are looking pretty good. Russia's executive is under control, Kazakhstan is allied to Russia, America is on its way towards fixing relationships with Russia, so that the American military can come in and fix what is broken about Russia's military efforts, namely the fact that Russia's got one bloody army left, and is at tech level 3.75. That just won't do. We need to start gobbling up countries to consolidate ourselves. For example, we need to merge in Kazakhstan, and look, Humanity First controls Belarus. Can't have that. That needs to be part of Servant Russia. We're using very heavy unity investment in order to push public opinion up and solve this fractured problem, everything to reduce the risk of coups. Then we'll probably crush inequality, most likely. The absolute goal is stability. America needs to produce research, Russia just needs to not explode or fall to anyone else. Absorbing Kazakhstan will resolve that particular issue. And now that we're mining in space, we're positive on metals and water. Our next base, hopefully, Stonehenge base, should put us positive on nobles and reduce the deficit on volatiles. How much does it cost to found an outpost? 3.9 might be worth it also to grab this 2.1 volatile here at Korolev Crater, even though we've got probes reaching Mars relatively soon, a little bit of production might be worth it. So what would it take to found at the Korolev Crater? 
3.9 and 34 days. I think we'll do that. So we can grab that volatile income there. Humanity first got the water. That's unfortunate. Are cool and um, but, and eventually they will get to Mars, but you know, it is what it is. We're in a position to get to Mars with serious resources. I didn't even know I had a place in Canada. See, that's what playing the servants is like, mate. Um, all right, so Kazakhstan is building mission control pretty much full time. Israel is building mission control full time. Israel can go up to eight mission control, so we're building a nice little bank here. So we should have a good space economy going. I've decided to put the world researching mission to the inner planets because you know why. Even with the recent nerfs, going to Mercury is still a good idea. And Ad Astra because T2 orbitals, still a good idea. And then what I might want actually is some orbital bombardment spaceships or some Marines after all. It's not just about being good, it's about stopping anyone else from being good, more than when playing other factions. So that's that. I think we will finish Alien Movements and then call it an episode. I think the breakup is going to be this episode initial setup, the next uh, positioning ourselves in space, and then at the appropriate time, one to two episodes on the grand plan of, you know, turning Earth over to the aliens. I mean, I think we had the emissaries. Social Science Lab is complete. Let's go with, I'll pick up space tugs because it'll be useful for our Mars settlements and alien movements will complete shortly. And now we have alien movements. It has taken endless hours of slow, frustrating work. The Chosen were cautious. How could they be otherwise? We were hunted, forced to break contact to start again over and over from scratch, but at last we've succeeded. After so many requests, the emissaries have agreed to allow us into their presence. We will stand before them and see them with our own eyes, and what will come then? It is time to meet with the emissaries. Should I not return, it will fall to you to continue our work. Locate an alien operative on Earth, and send one of our counsellors to conduct a contact mission on it. And with that, I'm probably going to close out the episode. So here you are, you got what you voted for. I think this is, I know I've mocked the game a lot, but this is a strong servant opening. Go for the United States, because it's always a good one. And remember, ultimately what you need to do is rob Earth of its ability to resist alien invasion. Taking the US military off the cards is a good one. The United uh, Kazakhstan denies other... Uh, AI factions the boost they need to get into space quickly, and uh, Russia obviously is the other major collection of nuclear weapons on the planet, and a nice little amount of boost. We've now secured all of them. Next episode we will continue to consolidate, we'll build our mission control, we'll basically act as normal in terms of expanding ourselves in space, but we might also militarize space very early in order to prevent other factions from building their space economies a little more proactively than normal. We'll get to Mars, we'll establish some serious mining, we might go to the inner planets. The reason to go to Mercury is research multipliers, tier 2 stations and tier 2 research bonuses to get the plus 45% or the plus 50% here or even 60 or 70 as quickly as possible to speed up our research because that's what we're going to use in order to help assist the aliens when they finally arrive. I do hope you're enjoying. I'm, I make a lot of jokes but I'm enjoying this in a, in a strange way. It is a little bit frustrating playing as the servants. Um, I enjoyed the Academy and Humanity First, obviously, for the challenge of fighting back. It's a little bit weird to be playing on the highest difficulty and feel like we're just going to... We're basically speed running, right? We're seeing how quickly we can win. And the biggest restriction on when I think we're able to do that is when the first assault carriers land. And where they land. If they land in a nuclear-armed country, we might be in trouble. But if they land somewhere that doesn't have nukes, well, then we might have options. I hope you're enjoying. I'll see you again soon.